The iron ship's from here. The Templar running things is Rupert Ferris and our target one. Target two is Sir David Brewster, who's got his hands on a bauble that could ruin us in this wretched war. Think you both can handle it? What a question. All right. My mistake. Ladies and gentlemen, the unstoppable Fry twins. See them nightly at Covent Garden. George, honestly, I've studied the plans of the laboratory and have every route covered. And I've got all I need right here. I'll extend your regards to Ferris. Chat later, George. We have a train to catch. Jacob! Evie! May the creed guide you, you vagrants! Poor man. More afraid than ever. Years have not been kind. Evie Fry, where do you get it from? The same place as you, Jacob. Have fun. <laughs> Don't die. Send me some laudanum for my head. Coming right up. What do you think you're doing? Stop now! this trouble! No one goes in or out, unless there's a problem. Sanitary inspector. This man is dead. You're the dead man! Run along. Ferris. I'm coming. Mr. Ferris has mandated. Mr. Ferris, sir. The, uh, the lad in the factory should be taken to be bandaged by the apothecary. Fine, but dock his wages. Yes, sir. Shall we arrive at a final price, Mr. Ferris? It is done. Oh? What did you accomplish, boy? A bolt loosened in Starrick's machine. A large bolt, but not enough. Your Grandmaster will fall. You assassins can circle London to your heart's content. The mechanism we have built has been going strong for a hundred years, and will run a thousand more. It is the very city itself. We will take London from your hands. From Croydon, you lurk in the shadows like a coward. I doubt it.
We seem to have made an unscheduled stop. Maybe next time I'll walk. Yard. Guard quarters. Bruce's laboratory. This is where the piece of Eden will be located. No loose ends. Now. Did a couple the locomotive and create a diversion. Well, where is it? Huh? Where's Brewster's supplies? Meter. busy while I head into your lab. Follow me down the tracks. You stay here and keep a lookout. All right. I'll shout if I get any bother. More weeks with the device. Your questionable practices are beginning to draw unwanted attention. You have been given more than enough time to achieve results, Sir David. I was unaware that you expected me to perform like a cocker spaniel. Permit me to remind you of your obligation to the Order. Miss Thorne, you ride me like a racehorse. Sir David, I will return tomorrow. If you have not unlocked the device's secrets, forget your dogs and horses. I will leave you to the wolves. Good day. I was merely promised a tour of the premises, my lords. Who sent you? It's one of green spies. Get that man to interrogation. Then I want him brought to the lab. What a pity. But no deviations from the mission. Ah, thank you kindly. I was in ever such a squeaky fix when, what do you know? You rescue me. Where's the hidden laboratory? Untie me and then we can parlay, my lady. I'm pressed for time. Tell me now. It's underground. Requires a key. One of the guards nicked mine, cheeky sod. Thank you. Uh, now, untie me? You got yourself in? I trust you can get yourself out again. Not to worry, my lady. Can still recall a couple of tricks from me carnival days. Charming. But it'll become unstable, sir. You heard what Miss Thorne said. We need results now. <laughs> Head, Sir David Brewster. But I have so much more to discover. Do not be afraid. I'm not. God will protect me. I will continue your experiment. You will not stop, Staric. Miss Thorne has already found another piece of Eden, more powerful than the last. I will take that one too. Will we fight to gain what we cannot take with us? It's in our nature. Get out of here. 
Captain. Now. What was that explosion? What explosion? EV. Piece of Eden detonated and took the lab with it. The magic lump of hyperbolic metal. I'm shocked. Simply because you have never valued the pieces does not All mean... went according to plan, hmm? <clears throat> there was a slight complication. How slight? The lab exploded. Jacob. You derailed a train. Oh, he did. Did he? Well, the train derailed and I happened to be on it. I killed my target. Brewster is also no more. Then all in all a successful mission in spite of you two. What about London? What about it? We're wasting our time out here. You know as well as I do that London has been the domain of the Templars for the last hundred years. They are far too strong yet. Patience. The Templars have found a new piece of Eden. Sir David is dead. They do not know how to use it. The Council shall guide us. Sound advice that your father would have seconded. I shall see you back in Crawley. Patience, Evie. Ah, oh, the gentle sound of opportunity passing us by. So what's stopping us? London is waiting to be liberated. Forget Crawley. Father would have wanted us to listen. Oh, Father, you could continue his legacy in London. Freeing future generations from a city ruled by Templars. You know, Jacob Fry, you might just be right. Then shall we? Yes. Let's. Onward to London. <laughs> Dr. Grammatica. Come on. Oh, Isabel. What a lovely surprise. Our mutual friends will be here shortly to search for the artifact. Once it's located, I'll let you know. Super. Always a pleasure. Prick. It's people like you that give historians a bad name. I'm afraid I don't have time for you today, Mr. Hastings. Thank you for making my job easy. Oh, shit. It does look grim. Masterberg, Agent Acosta. Deal with them, please. Move it! Hunt them down! All they had to do was wait for you to search the data. Their little stunt has put the whole operation at risk. You need to synchronize Jacob and Evie's memories. Find something that puts us ahead of the enemy. Time is of the essence, and lives are now clearly on the line. Good luck. I've never seen so many people all at once. <laughs> Churning seas of London. It's just the way Father described. Now, to find Henry Green and formulate a plan of attack against the Templars. Who's Mr. Green again? The assassin watching over London. Did you not listen the first three times? Listen to what? <laughs> Oi, watch it. Ben pardon, sir. Oi! Come back here, you filthy dipper! Jacob, stop! Located. It was marked on Father's map.
and nor in the Western world. Every class, every borough, the gangs, the industries. His reach extends all across London. I've always thought of myself as a gang leader. Firm, but fair. Huh. Well, I have uniforms. And I'll unite a mix of disenfranchised outsiders under one name. That's it, Evie. We can rally them to our side. Oh, like the way that you rallied those car players at the Oakbrook Tavern into the river. Oh, that was different. They beat me at whist. I can see it now. We'll call ourselves the Rooks. You're never good at chess either. Have you got a better plan? Find the piece of Eden. Oh, well, let me show you the lay of the land. Shall we? Riddled with crime. Child labor, despite regulations. A gang known as the Blighters overruns the streets. And Templars manipulating behind the scenes. As in all the other boroughs, we need to return this city to the people who built it in the first place. We will free London from Starrick. You have my word. And my books. Miss Fry, your passion is inspiring. Come. Let us return to my shop, and I can bring you up to date on the rest. Confound this city! No one looks where they're going! Yes, I've noticed that. Bloody drood! I'll never finish it at this rate. Only Providence knows where those words are headed now. Well, I must get to work replacing them. Should you ever be in the mood for a tale or two, you can always find me where the ale is warm and tempers are hot. Ta-ta! What an odd man. That Mr. Fry was Charles Dickens. Knows everyone and everything in the city. If I were you, I would keep that connection in your back pocket. <clears throat> Kaylock's gang is nearby. They must not follow me back to my shop. We'll take care of it. Here. You might be able to use this. Oh, God, I hope so. My carriage is nearby. Make use of it to throw them off my trail. I will meet you at the curio shop. We gave them more than that. <laughs> Who are all these people? Over the years, I have established a number of connections across the city. Splendid. We'll need focused aid. Focused aid? <sighs> we take over Starek's gangs. We cripple his control. You're not aiming high enough. Starek has influence in every branch of society. We need to match him. I see what you're saying, Evie. We need the Rooks. You are not starting a gang called the Rooks. I believe I may have an idea of my own. We will need the police to turn a blind eye to activities. My ally in the force, Sergeant Aveline. I've heard he's a master of disguise. Next up, urchins. 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 Children make for excellent spies. Clara O'Day. Smart as a whip, that one. Finally, you would be wise to remember that Starek never acts alone. There are gang leaders in every borough. You'll meet them soon enough, no doubt. Rexford Gaylock, known for his ability to vanish before your very eyes. Should we make him vanish for real? I suppose. One moment. Um, a Templar target you might want to look into. Uh, be cautious. It's rough out there. No, don't worry about me, Greeny. I can handle a few thugs. Seems to want my employer's attention, Mr. Fry. Oh, I positively crave it. But you'll do for now. As you like. Well, we tried. I may know a thing or two about that splendid fellow you're talking about. What's this? God's sake! Are you trying to blow the gaff? What? Sergeant Aberline, at your service. I presume you're the Fry twins Green mentioned. I was expecting you to be a policeman. I was expecting you to be discreet. Henry Green said that you could help us go unnoticed. This is how it will work. I will give you the names of criminal gang members. You will bring them back to me. Quietly. Oh, we'll be as quiet as an old lady. A very hairy, strange old lady that looks a lot like a policeman.
What is this place? It's nice to meet you both at last. This is Babylon Alley. Here, we make it our business to know the streets and provide children with the opportunity to control their own destinies. Clara. Mr. Green said we might be able to help one another. In exchange for our services, we ask a small favor. Well, why not? You seem to have taken most of my money. Why not take a small favor, too? There are several factories about the city that are powered almost entirely by child labor. Those children work long hours with little pay, and most are not permitted even to leave the factory grounds. They suffer terribly. I need you to save them. A small favor. In return, we offer you intelligence. Something you clearly need. Oh, hold on a minute. I'm late for an appointment. What are these terms? We accept. <laughs> Pleasure doing business with you. Ah, there you are. All that stands between you and Whitechapel is the villain controlling the borough. Kaylock has demanded you settle the claim for territory in a gang fight. His loss? <laughs> yeah. I'm sure you can put this to better use than I can. Oh, what's this, Greeny? Assassin Christmas. Is this a thanks a man gets for defending his country? Why did I bother? <laughs> Gather your allies. your terms and waits for you at the Whitechapel train station. He's bet his train on the fight. No kale. to be broken. Oh well, at least we have a train now. It's not all bad. Kaylock is dead! Whitechapel is no longer in the hands of the blighters! You now have the chance to join our ranks. We welcome all who would stand up to Steric and his cutthroats. the tracks and run Bertha another mile for that dirty bow bike. Kaylock? <laughs> He's left the station. Mel, hello, fancy pants. And who might you I'm Evie Fry, and this is my brother, Jacob Fry. Pleased to meet you. I'm Agnes McBean. A delight. I thought I was getting a promotion. I suppose I'm out of work now. Come work for us instead. <laughs> I won't bail your heat. You pay better than scraps? Oh, I'm sure we can at least match that. Then may I present to you Agnes and Bertha, lady and locomotive, at your service. I'll be in the next car. A hideout on the rails? What an excellent idea. Yes, it all worked out rather well. Now, I would like to follow up a lead on... Jacob? Is this serious? I'm not doing anything until this gets fixed. I believe I know someone who can help with that. I knew you would, Greenie. Oh, blast them. Alec, whatever is the matter? I have been intercepting nothing but poppycock propaganda about soothing, syrup and whatnot. No, I swear to high heavens, if Staric's monopoly continues... Alec, I beg your pardon. These are friends of mine. Evie Fry and her brother, Jacob. Oh, um... 
Alexander Graham Bell. Linguist, inventor, and technical expert. Alec, I have something of a favor to ask you. Can you fix this? Oh, it looks like the casing is cracked. Oh, comes apart. <laughs> I see. Could have used one of these to fit my fuses on top of Big Ben. Alec is installing a new telegraph line for our Free Press Association. To combat the Static Telegraph Company. Now, if I can mend the fuses connecting independent lines from Big Ben, Staric will be weakened. Only, we are somewhat at a handicap. And, there. Oh, I've removed the mechanism, so it may work with your bracer. I'll put it to use immediately. <laughs> Jacob, wait. Mr. Bell, allow me to help you with your fuses. Oh, you will not find me too proud to accept Miss Fry. Oh, uh, we can use my carriage if you'd be so good as to hold the reins, though. I'll take that. Um, I, I can help you. Oh, Miss. Thank you very much, Miss Fry. I will now be able to continue with the installation of the new line. If there's anything else I can do to help. Uh, certainly. Please do come and visit. Oh, uh, I was toying with this device and have noted down the formula for you. It, it's not perfect yet, but by golly, it works. Uh, I was just showing Jacob the first message was received via the mended lines. Oh, uh, you can keep the rope launcher, by the way. Um, we've managed to procure another one for your brother. Excellent work. Thank you again. You're very welcome, Mr. Bell. We can now defend the principle of impartial news and free speech. Free is fair, but free and brief is far better. Ha <laughs> ha! Ah, Fry, such caustic wit. <laughs> And on that note, we must depart. <laughs> oh, uh, good fortune to you both. Uh, call on me at any time. Who is that? Oh, you mean you don't know? Beautiful train you got here. Miss McBean was just telling me all about her. Name's Ned. How do you do? I won't take up more of your time. Uh, if you want to learn a thing or two about the finest transit systems in the world, you can find me at this address. Let us return to locating the Peace of Eden. We need to reclaim London from Staric. Who are my targets? It's not time for that yet. I didn't come to London to hunt curios. First understand the dance, only then become the dancer. Oh, so you're taking over where father left off. Someone has to. Evie, finding the precursor artifact will give us an insight into what the temple is intent. Jacob, I have information about Starek's associates that should be of use to you. Here. Lambeth. It bears the Templar Grandmaster's name. About time for a visit to the Doctor. I don't see that cure arriving any time soon. And what exactly will you be doing, might I ask? You know very well. Tracking down the Peace of Eden. Enjoy your studies. I'll be out killing Templars. Another exciting night home for Evie Fry. Just on my way out, actually. I found the piece of Eden. What's this one going to do, hmm? Heal the sick? Deflect bullets? Control the populace? They're dangerous objects, Jacob, especially in Templar hands. Oh, you sound exactly like father. If only. Lucy Thorne is expecting a shipment tonight. She's Starek's expert in the occult. I'm nearly certain she is receiving the piece of Eden Sir David Brewster mentioned. Sounds like fun. Mind if I join you? I promise you will stick to the mission. I swear.
The contents of that box are worth more than your life and those of your entire family. Do you understand? Yes, Miss Thorne. Uh, careful there. I double the guard on that cart. Now, Miss Thorne, there's the matter of some uh, papers for Mr. Sarek. If you'll just come this way. Very well, but make it quick. Whatever it is she's after, it's in that chest. There are gunmen on the rooftops. Can you dispose of them before I reach the cart? I was hoping for a challenge. You may have not found a piece of Eden, but this material is invaluable. Look. It says the London assassins had found a shroud. The shroud of Eden is supposed to heal even the gravest injury. If the assassins had found something like this, surely Father would have known. There must be something we're missing. Something only we can see. These look like directions. Are you coming? Fieldwork is not really my speciality. We found a clue to a precursor object. Don't you want to follow it? Put that way, one can hardly refuse. Unless you have news of the lost notebook. That makes getting in a challenge. You still intend to enter? If this is a Templar stronghold, it won't get any easier. Don't worry. We'll stay well away from Miss Lucy. Shall we? Can you check over there? Of course. What are we looking for? I'm not quite sure. I am no one's prey. Enormously subtle, is it? Clearly, Kenway had a strong sense of spectacle. The history of the London assassins. Vault holes, vaults. A hidden key. This is it. You say you heard music. There was no opening there before. It's closing! Yes, I can see that. Help me block it. We need to find another way out. The aura of death surrounds thee both. Get thee behind me! <laughs> Alas, these days, stupidity is all too prevalent. You know, I never asked your names when we last met. I'm Evie Fry, and this is my brother Jacob. Tell me, do you believe in ghosts? Not particularly. Yes. I'm skeptical myself. Here we are, in the world's most advanced city, yet its citizens are so enthralled to the supernatural, they leave themselves vulnerable to charlatans. Which is why I joined 
the Ghost Club. The first society in the world to look systematically at the phenomenon. Because truth, like a spirit, must be cajoled before it will reveal itself. Will you join us? Sounds absolutely ridiculous. Why not? It does sound intriguing. Splendid. I have your first case. Miss Fry, I brought some books. I hope I'm not intruding by being here. Quite the contrary. It's nice to have the company. A herbarium? Are you collecting flowers for someone? Only myself. I'm told it's something of a British pastime. Did you know, they all have symbolic meanings. I had heard something of the sort. Of course you have. Unfortunately, I have no time to fill the book. I could collect some samples, if you would accept my help. I would appreciate that. Thank you, Miss Fry. You saw he drinks. Your syrup is liquefying him. He's turning him simple-headed. You are scaring away my customers. Why don't you bugger off or I'll give you something to remember me by. Oh, you can't talk to me like that, you little guttling. What's all this, then? Oh, sod off. If you'll excuse me, madam. Keep a sharp eye out, lads. Someone's targeting our network. The distillery might be next. You should not go about frightening respectable gentlemen, young man. I didn't realize snooping around was considered gentlemen. Snooping? Sir, I assure you. Keep vigilant. Quick. That was too close a call. You, young man, gave me quite a fright. <laughs> well done, dear boy. Well done. Charles Darwin, delighted to make your acquaintance. Jacob Fry, the pleasure's all mine. <laughs> While you were busy wreaking havoc, I found this. It indicates that a sample of every batch has been sent to Lambeth Asylum. Oh, I wonder if it's visiting hours. Don't be so hasty, Mr. Fry. Many people work at Lambeth. You wouldn't want to attract unwanted attention. Mm. And where's the fun in that? Not every problem can be solved by blowing things sky high. Sometimes a little discretion is in order. It's getting late. I will meet you at the asylum to continue our investigation. Well, sir, I had nothing to do with that anonymous article. Nothing, I say. That is a lie, sir. And you know it. Bah, I don't have time for this nonsense. Nonsense? It is my name and reputation you have willfully besmirched, sir. My very name. Bah! <laughs> drive, damn you, drive. <laughs> that is Richard Owen. A vile, despicable wretch of a man! Really? I could have sworn you were close friends. Mr. Owen works at the asylum. He will know who made the syrup. Get him! Get him! Ah, Jacob. Uh, Miss uh, Fry, how good to see you. Oh, have you seen Stalick's latest lies? Lies in a newspaper? What transpired from the new line you're establishing? Oh, the cables we ordered never arrived. And then we intercepted this. A message mentioning cargo seized at College Wharf. Then let's unseize it. Oh, uh, wait. Another intercepted wire contained the recipe for a powerful hallucinogenic serum. I've adapted this dart mechanism to work with your bracers. Alec, you're a genius. Well, that patently is untrue. Although, I've also discovered that the serum adopts a form of a gas when subjected to heat. Just when I think you can't surpass yourself. <laughs> this 
Trouble on the docks, lads! We need to get this load to Steric now! Careful there, Mr. Bell. Every worthwhile endeavor is fraught with dangers, my dear friends. None more so than yours. But you have triumphed once again. How do you know? We have entered the age of communication, remember? We've already received word from Greenwich that the shipment has arrived safely, thanks to you. Have you discovered what else is in that shipment? Indeed. Um, I'm afraid that Starek's poison has found its way onto the open market. If he believes that will stop us, he is mistaken. I knew you'd show. My warmest welcome. It's our business to keep London in balance, monitoring shipments by road, sea, and rail. Our biggest problem, the blighters. If you could rid us of them, I'd be ever so grateful. It would make London safer. You find anything that sparkles, it's yours. I do love a bit of sparkle. Mr. Fry, I trust that you had a productive meeting with Mr. Owen. Oh, yes, we had the most wonderful chat. I found out the man behind Starek's soothing syrup is John Elliotson. Dr. Elliotson, I haven't heard that name in a long while. He was a brilliant heart specialist until he became obsessed with phrenology and mesmerism. It ruined his career. Well, how shall we proceed? Oh, with all respect, Mr. Darwin, I believe I should proceed alone. After all, we wouldn't want to attract any unwanted attention. Sounds very wise. Good luck, my boy. Oh, and uh, Mr. Fry, should you find yourself with any free time, please do call on me. As you've just witnessed, the application of too much pressure can sometimes result in unexpected outcomes. Unfortunately, it appears I've ruined the organ. Send up a cadaver. At once, Dr. Elitson. I don't care about your ethics, and I care even less about your damn patience. Now hand over your keys. What are you doing? Haven't you heard? You're fired. Now bugger off. At last it ends. Yet I can only think of beginnings. A better tomorrow, forged with the blood of visionaries. All I see is the blood of a lunatic. <laughs> Do you truly believe murdering an old man will stop humanity's great architect? Crawford Sterick has a glorious design for mankind. Designs are meant to be broken. I hear a child. A child who believes it can solve all the world's woes with a flick of a blade. Have you ever pondered the consequences of your actions, Jacob Fry? Or did your father teach you nothing? Elliotson expired, and soothing syrup production has ceased. 
Outrageous! Fry intends to endanger all of London at the hands of the mob. Or perhaps he doesn't intend much of anything at all. Thank He's you simply content to dice with our lives. The asylum is shut up. Medical care throughout the city is in disarray. He does not, cannot understand the consequences of his actions. The man is clearly an anarchist! Gentlemen. This tea was brought to me from India. By a ship. Then up from the harbor to a factory. Where it was packaged and ferried by carriage to my door. Unpacked in the larder and brought upstairs to me. All by men and women who work for me. Who are indebted to me. Crawford Starrick. For their jobs, the time, the very lives they lead. They will work in my factories and so too shall their children. And you come to me with talk of this Jacob Fry. This insignificant blemish who calls himself assassin. You disrespect the very city that works day and night so that we may drink this. This miracle, this tea. I'm nearing the end of my research. Our beloved London shall not suffer such a bothersome fool for much longer. And what of this sister I've heard of? Miss Fry. Miss Fry shall be gutted. Soon enough. Delicious. Sorry to interrupt, Initiate. Thought you'd like to know that Sean and Rebecca got away from Odzoberg. Berg runs a unit called Sigma Team. Violet DaCosta is his tech support. They've been hunting and killing assassins for a long time. Thank God you're all right. Oh, tish tosh. It'll take more than a Templar super soldier to end the glorious saga of Sean Danger Hastings. I was talking to Rebecca. Right. Anyway, Berg's presence confirms it. The Peace of Eden is in London. The Initiate's data sync suggests it's the Shroud. The Templars seem to want it pretty bad all of a sudden. They must know something we don't. The only thing we know is that we can't go up against Sigma Team alone. Leave that to me. In the meantime, keep a low profile. Let the Initiate continue to sync the data. A letter. Now Starek has bought an omnibus company as well. I suppose he wants to control the neighborhood's workers and keep them under his thumb. Pearl Attaway is Starek's competitor, is she? Perhaps it's time I went into business. And Miss Fry, what are your plans? I studied the history we recovered from the Kenway Mansion's hidden room. I'm off to a certain monument. A letter. Ah! Oh! Jacob, Evie, it's you. Thank goodness. Experimenting, are we, Alec? Correct. And looking a bit frazzled. Nerves. It's those great oafs Starrick keeps sending round to coax me. He is offering a ridiculous amount of money. Alec, you're not thinking of jumping ship, are you? Never. I've been working in something in case they get too insistent. Uh, it's meant to stun an assailant, should the need arise. Are you certain that it works? Uh, not as such. I've made three of them with varying degrees of acidity and whatnot. Oh, one must be the right formula. Let's find some Staric lackeys to target then, shall we? <laughs> Speaking of Staric, he is still transmitting false information. We could simply destroy his transmitters. His company's too well guarded. And the bombs will help, but it would be awkward to produce bombs that potentially do not stun. Oh, wait a minute. Looks like opportunity has come knocking. <laughs> Oh dear, you never looked so angry before. Stand clear, Alec. Let us instead play a little linguistic game with them. Um, take the bombs and climb onto the roof. Uh, when I see the name of uh, a fruit, toss one near the thugs. Right then. Oh, uh, oh wait, uh, I nearly forgot. Um, slip these into your boots and you will henceforth be immune to all voltaic discharge. I think.
Jacob Eve. Thanks are once again in order for supporting what is most dear to me and to our cause, freedom of speech. It's a blessing that you employ your genius for the common good, Alec. However, I suggest you vacate your workshop. No need. Not now you've given me sacks full of courage. And besides, what with my little devices, I have all the protection I need. Uh, should you find yourselves with a moment to spare, do drop by. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Miss Attaway. Yes, may I? Oh, splendid. You're here to murder me. I what? No matter. Everyone has a prize. Is this enough? I'm not here to kill you. And what's your game? Mr. Starrick and the Milner Company have blocked your ambitions long enough. I have a business proposition for you. Wonderful. Come with me. We have much to discuss, Mr. Jacob Fry. At your service. Truer words were never spoken. If you'd be so kind. Malcolm Milner. Starrick's puppet himself. Careful, you twats. This park scene needs to make it to the Outway Depot. He thinks he can burn my buses. Let's give him a taste of his own medicine. Let's give him the whole damn bottle. <laughs> we'll turn Milner's park scene against him. But I'll need help from my gang. Such entrepreneurial instinct, Mr. Fry. I shall leave you to it. How's that for a taste? I can see Milner's stock price plummeting already. You're hired. Oh, I have more business planned for us both. Drop a note to my secretary to make an appointment, and I shall reveal the next step in our scheme. I don't actually work. Like that. So the hints you found in the Kenway House lead to the monument. What a wonderful use of your time, following me around, asking obvious questions. Well, since Henry isn't here, I thought you might enjoy the company. I don't require any company, and Mr. Green is following up on some leads of his own. Oh, yes, Mr. Green. That's a fascinating idea. Oh, please, Mr. Green, come and take a look at this book and stand oh so close to me, Mr. Green. I do not. Well, perhaps you have nothing better to do, but I'm busy protecting the assassins. Are you really? What was it Father used to say? Don't allow personal feelings to compromise the mission. Precisely. Anyway, I'm off. If I find any more wild geese for you to chase, I'll be in touch. Be ever more pleasant for your absence. This looks familiar. It's in the very top. Good day, Miss Fry. I'll take that. You will shroud to cement your own power. But what if you cannot control it? And why do you want the shroud? Merely to keep the Templars from having it. How like an assassin to hold the power of eternal life, and yet be too afraid to use it. Eternal life? Is that what you think the Shroud offers? What I think is no longer your concern. Coming with.
with me. I have other plans. <laughs> Mr. Fry, I told you to make an appointment. My schedule was open. You're fortunate I like you. <laughs> Internal combustion engines. Eight small syllables that mean a great deal of money. The engines will be delivered to Milner by train. Secure them for me, and he will be devastated. Hmm. I need a second train to pull this off. And I think I know just the man. So we have a deal, Mr. Fry? You're fortunate I like you, Miss Attaway. <laughs> so, what do you want, Fry? What makes you so sure I want something? Perhaps I saved you out of the kindness of my own heart. <laughs> Come on, let me tell you about the job. Just be sure to make the transfer. Give him help. The internal combustion engine. The end of horse-drawn transport. <laughs> it's like gazing into the future. And what is the going rate for the future, do you think? Uh, we're not selling them. You're giving them to your contact? You'll be paid all the same. <laughs> Who is this Pearl, anyway? How long have you been working with her? She's a business partner. That's all you need to know. Didn't make it to la -de da Slap some gold leaf here and there. I gave the wood a splash of shellac. I've holstered the lot. And how do you like the lampshades? Mm, no, it wasn't me. Not guilty. I beg your pardon. You, you're the one. I assure you, we've never met. Is this a prize fighting ring? You bet your eyes and ears it is, my lord, my lady. The name's Robert Topping. Best bookie in all of London, at your disposal. Well, second best, but my mum says Don's a bit of an Indian poop. Anyhow, I can show you a vast array of exciting things, from prize fights to carriage races. I think we can afford to spend a little time here. <laughs> 